All right. We are joined by our winning manufacturer, champion manufacturer, and that's Jim Campbell. He's General Motors Vice President, Performance and Motorsports. Uh, thank you, Jim, for, for coming to join us. Uh, maybe just start off with a couple words on, on this championship. Well, I'd say uh, by Kyle today, he wins a race, wins a championship. Uh, incredible. Uh, it's the 33rd time a Chevy driver's won the championship. Couldn't be prouder of that. Uh, we put two goals up every year at the beginning of the season. One's the manufacturer's championship, and side-by-side side is to get a Chevrolet driver to the driver's championship. Uh, and last weekend, uh, cl we clinched the manufacturer's championship. It was Chev Chevrolet's 40th manufacturer's championship, and now Kyle brings home the 33rd uh, Chevrolet driver's championship. So uh, two objectives that were at the top of the list, and, and uh, both of them accomplished here coming out the other end of this race here today. Okay, if you have a question for Jim, please raise your hand, and we'll get you a mic. Jim. Yeah, All we right, we got two. We'll start with uh, Davey in the back, and then we'll bring it up to Jenna. Davey Siegel with Front Stretch. Congratulations, Jim. Uh, you guys obviously had Kyle in the fold before um, the incident that happened on iRacing last year, and you guys brought him back into the fold this year. What was the decision making like from your guys' perspective as an OEM in terms of evaluating what he had done in his time away from the sport to then bring him back into the fold? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, clearly, you know, Kyle did a lot of work off the track um, while he was, you know, out of the sport. Uh, we know we we know Kyle well, um, as you probably are aware. Starting in 2017, through our association with Urban Youth Racing School, uh, we took Kyle to the school to, uh, you know, interface with uh, the students in one of their classes, and he kept that association up even beyond the formal introduction from our from our standpoint. And Kyle, um, you know, Kyle did a lot of work uh, off the track during that time with Urban Youth Racing School. Michelle and Anthony Martin, they're here today, along with members of their, uh, their chair chairman was here today, and members of their board were here as well. They did a lot of work with Kyle uh, off the track. He met with the students, um, and he also did, you know, work with uh, the Tony Senna Foundation, did a lot of, uh, did a lot of work that we observed. Um, and uh, when you kind of, you know, you know, reviewed all the work he did off the track. We, you know, we we decided that it was uh, worth uh, supporting uh, Rick's request to you know sign him sign him on to the team. And uh, he, what I will tell you is, what he's doing off the track um, doesn't get as much um, focus as what he's doing on the track. Whether you're talking about here in NASCAR or, or in the dirt track series, but um, I am uh, really pleased with what he's doing off the track as well as his performance on the track. And so that combination's been a real positive and. Uh, Work he's doing even today with uh, the Hendrick Harris Foundation, his own foundation, which he which he launched, uh, uh, the Senna Foundation, and then and then obviously Urban Youth Racing School. Uh, he'll be uh, uh, he was scheduled to go s uh, early early December uh, to take part in uh, one of the classes where the students are kicking off another class, and he'll be he'll be there. I'll tell you uh, one thing is because I, I uh, join a lot of the Urban Youth Racing School sessions, especially when they've been virtual. I've been you know joining them on on Saturday mornings, and very often Kyle. Kyle Larson would be on those same sessions uh, to say hello to the students, answer questions. And so uh, what he's done on the track has been incredible. Um, you know, obviously he got his 10th uh, win um, and brought home the championship. The other thing I, I just would say is that uh, the pit crew did an amazing job in the last pit stop, but when you really reflect on it, that team did that all year long. It was just really, it was really an example of what they did all season long. And so. So proud of uh, the number five uh, Chevrolet team and, w and what they did this year. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Congratulations. Um, so you had Kyle, and he's the favorite, and you probably want to feel good about that, but you can't feel good in, in this format. I'm wondering what this race was like for you, you, you guys in Chevrolet, especially as it looked like on that long run that it was slipping away. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, when you think about this format with four, and, and we had, you know, obviously last weekend, uh, uh, Chase Elliott, uh, you know, locked in at the end of the second stage on points, so we knew we had two in, two in the final four, and then you say, what other drivers do you want to compete against? And the list is long, and you don't want to compete against any of them. They're that tough, and so a Truex Jr. showed exactly how good he is. He was really tough in the long runs, um, but I, I just love how the team, the five team responded, uh, and how they pulled off that last pit stop, got to the front. Kyle drove it to the front and uh, and kept it there. And they and just hit his marks all the way through. There, at any point, if you make one mistake, 
uh, a, a guy like uh, Truex Jr., who's a champion and a great driver, will take advantage of it. And Kyle and uh, Cliff Daniels, they kind of kept their heads about them, hit their marks, and delivered the win in the championship. So uh, what I'd say, this format, um, the other two that are non-Chevys, if you look at all the people who are competing for those two spots, you don't want to race against any of them. They're, they're that good. We'll go up to the press box for a question. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires.net. Jim, uh, you guys will go down on the history books as having the final um, car to win under this, uh, I guess, this make uh, with us going to the next gen car next year. Does that mean anything for, for you guys? Do you, do you take that away with as a success overall? Well, uh, Jerry, thanks for the question. I, you know, winning a race at the professional levels is a difficult, period. To win, in this case, 19 races for Chevrolet. Kyle does 10 race wins and brings the championship home. Um, regardless of the f format and the rule set, um, it's difficult to do, and I'm really proud of what Kyle and, and the Hendrick team did. Um, and Chevrolet, as you know, competes in all kinds of racing series, uh, you know, in the U.S. and across the world. And so when they change the rules, you got to change and, and be ready to race. So that's what we'll do. But that's for next year. Tonight is for the, for celebration of the Kyle Larson and uh, Cliff Daniels and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports and the Chevrolet engineers. Um, that's what our focus is tonight. And just big shout out to uh, everybody at Hendrick: Rick Hendrick, Marshall Carlson, uh, Jeff Andrews, Chad Canales, Jeff Gordon. Uh, the list goes on. And then from the Chevrolet side. Um, we picked up a real talented guy named Eric Warren, Dr. Eric Warren, and he was at Richard Childress Racing, super talented engineer, uh, and he leads our NASCAR programs from an engineering standpoint. So proud of the job he's done along with Pat Sui and Adam Golombeski. Uh, and then I've got a counterpart, Jim Danny, he was our vice president of engineering. And we're all in uh, on motorsports at Chevrolet, as you know, so it's, uh, I'm really happy for those guys too. Thanks, sir. We'll go up here to uh, Alex. Alex, raise your hand. Hi. There you go. Alexandra with the Charlotte Observer. Um, Alan Gustafson was in here on Friday, I believe, uh, or Saturday after qualifying. He talked about just, he said that he thinks that pretty much the, the wor he's, he's got two of the world's best drivers that he's working with at, at Hendrick right now. And I'm curious if you also see that from Chevrolet's perspective, if you feel like this is kind of, th with the youth that, that that team has right now, that it's kind of the start of, of a legendary era for the right. manufacturer. Thanks for the question. And I, I just said a very broad level, if you think about the Chevy driver lineup that we've had over the n past years, and many of these amazing drivers and champions retired. Uh, Tony Stewart retired. He won three championships with us at, at our company. Jeff Gordon retired. Dale Earnhardt Jr., who was obviously an Xfinity champion, but also won you know so many races at the cup level, retired. Um, Kevin Harvick moved on to another, to the Ford, Ford side. Uh, and along the way, we brought in so many young, amazing drivers. And they were young drivers who, in many cases, were in, the cu in their first year in Cup. They hadn't really been to many of these tracks at that level. And what I love about what's happening right now, Chevy has the youngest average age of drivers across all of our teams. And so uh, what I love about them is they're getting better and better every race, every year. So I'm excited about what that means for the future. Certainly talented drivers at Hendrick. But there's also talented drivers across all the Chevrolet teams. Super proud of that and, and excited. Go to Jim next. Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. Jim, uh, kind of following up a little bit on Jerry's question, uh, celebrating a championship tonight, but there's a lot of work to be done between now and February with a new car. I just wondered how you guys feel uh, on your progress as, uh, with the new car and what are you hoping to get out of the myriad of tests that will be going on between now and February? Yeah. Well, you know, the test schedule, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in Charlotte, we'll be back here. There's a whole list of tests that are in front of us. In the automobile business, you do two things. You sell what you have in the showroom today while you prepare the next model for the showroom tomorrow. We're doing the same thing. We're racing today with the, the, the car we have while we've been preparing the next-gen Camaro. Um, ZL1 for next year. And so it's something in the auto industry, it's what we do. You gotta be able to do those two things at the same time. So our team is definitely preparing on that side, but obviously uh, that's, uh, you know, that uh, preparation and development continues in the coming weeks and months uh, as we prepare for the next gen next year. But for tonight, um, just a huge focus on uh, what Hendrick Motorsports accomplished tonight with Kyle and Cliff um, and the whole team, really proud of them. Any final questions for Jim? 
Got a Dan up here. Dan Gelson, Associated Press. Jim, it's better to have one if it's the cup than two. Better to have what? One, like Toyota did, uh, like Chevy did today, than two that Toyota oh, did. Right. You've got to win the Yeah, I was, I, I was uh, thinking about the weekend. Uh, we had, obviously, uh, you know, Zane in the, in the uh, championship race on Friday. We didn't, you know, Zane actually did a nice shot. He had a shot at it, but we didn't really get to winner's circle there. Uh, yesterday we had uh, two uh, drivers between Noah and AJ. Didn't get to winner's circle. And today the focus was we got to get to the winner's circle on the third race, and it's the big one. Certainly we would have loved to have won in all of those categories, but today at, at the cup level, at the top level, to get the, the win in the championship, uh, so very special. Thanks, Dan. Any final questions for Jim? All right. Well, congratulations, Jim, on a great year. Thanks for your time.